the Colorado pavement sometime people really do find things right in their own backyard. In 1936 a man named Tom Kenny was digging a vegetable cellar on his property in Plateau Valley on the western slopes of the Rocky Mountains in Colorado when his progress was suddenly halted when his pick struck a slab of stone at a depth of about 10 feet. Further digging revealed a smooth and level pavement made of 5-inch square, handmade tiles that had been laid with mortar. Analysis of the mortar also revealed it to be of a different chemical composition to anything that can be found locally, further adding to the mystery. Scientists cannot fathom the mystery of the pavement and can only agree that it is between 20,000 and 80,000 years old. The problem again is that the pavement was found in the same geological era as the three-toed the Miocene horse which reputedly roamed the area from around 6 to 30 million years ago. Woods The pavement still exists on the Kenny property today. The Kentucky pavement in another discovery extraordinary similar to the pavement discovered on Tom Kenny's property in Colorado was made by workmen digging at Blue Springs, Kentucky. At first the men discovered the bones a mastodon at a depth of around 12 feet. However, after further digging, three feet deeper they uncovered a broad stone pavement of totally unknown origin that was constructed of large, neatly cut stone slabs resembling the road of some kind. Who could have paved the road through the Rocky Mountains so long ago that it now lies 15 feet below the ground? The fruit that really should not exist I've included this last little tidy bit in the riddles section simply because I think it's interesting and just because it may give you something to think about in your everyday life. Something that really is most strange. Most people are completely unaware of this fact but there is a fruit that is eaten by millions of people all around the world every day that is quite remarkable and in all reality, simply shouldn't exist. I'm talking, of course, about the banana. Bananas are actually the most mysterious fruit in the world because bananas have no seeds and what makes this even more mysterious is the fact that they are found in almost every country in the world. Now that may not sound so odd at first but let me fully explain this enigma to you. Firstly, banana plants are not trees. They are actually a perennial herb. The trunk of the plant is really nothing more than the plant's outer leaves. The real stem of the plant doesn't actually become visible until it pushes up through the top to produce the large purple flower that will eventually develop into the fruit. Then, having finished its perennial reproductive cycle, the plant dies. The problem here, is that in the reproductive cycle of the banana, seeds are completely absent from the mature fruit. A new seedling known as a sucker can only ever be generated from a piece of the plant's rootstock and yet bananas are found in almost most every place on earth, even on quite remote and isolated islands. How in the world did they all get there? The seeds certainly weren't carried across the oceans by prevailing winds. To fully appreciate this anomaly first consider that the only other seedless plants that exist anywhere in the world are things like seedless grapes, navel oranges and the many genetically modified varieties of commercial vegetables that can now be purchased. The point is, any other seedless plants that exist, anywhere, in the world, are all that way because they have genetically modified. And yet here we have the humble banana, which is also the only food in existence that contains exactly the correct requirements of vitamins and minerals for man's metabolism completely. It is the only food that man can live on healthily, by itself, with complete nutrition. It is found all over the world and yet we have no knowledge of how it could possibly have come into being. It seems highly improbable that the worldwide distribution of a seedless fruit that is perfectly tailored for sustaining man would have just somehow happened. It is extremely unlikely for such a plant to have ever been produced by nature all on its own and many people believe that somehow, somewhere, sometime, someone in our far distant past genetically engineered bananas into the widely dispersed and remarkably nutritious plant that we find everywhere in such abundance to date. These people cite that bananas are living daily proof of an ancient culture that spanned the entire globe in remote prehistory. Botanists also now tentatively agree that the spread of the banana plant appears to have radiated outward from the Pacific region. The banana plant incidentally, is not actually a fruit or a vegetable, but it does reach a height of around 30 feet of maturity which makes it the world's largest herb and the tallest plant in existence that does not have a woody trunk. Loose ends The amount of objects similar to the ones we have just discussed that have actually been found on our planet is staggering is continually growing and as you can see, 
many of these artifacts are absolutely unexplainable and absolutely do not fit in any way within our currently accepted framework of history at all. In fact, many of them go so far as to disprove our current theories on the past completely. How is it that scholars can ask us to accept the theories they have offered us as fact yet in order for us to do so, they ask that we ignore the abundant physical evidence that is right before our eyes? Could it be because the hard evidence completely undermines the very theory they are asking us to believe? There are many other strange and out-of-place artifacts so parts that have been found that are not included in this list and many unconfirmed stories of others. For the purposes of this work I have preferred to deal only with anomalies I have been able to substantially confirm. There are many other reports, though perhaps not quite as compelling because many could have been either forged or misinterpreted but some are interesting to say the least. A gold thread stuck in rock. In 1844 the London Times reported that workmen quarrying stone near the river Tweed in Scotland unearthed a piece of gold thread embedded in the rock eight feet below ground level. A much too old screw. A two-inch metal screw was apparently discovered in a piece of feldspar unearthed in 1865, from the Abbey Mine in Treasure City, Nevada. The screw had long since oxidized and disappeared, but the impression of its form, particularly the slotted head and shape of the thread, could still be clearly seen within the feldspar. The piece of feldspar that contained the screw has been calculated to be around 21 million years in age. A very old nail. In 1851 and as reported in the Illinois Springfield Republican, a man named Hiram V. Wood had found a fist-sized chunk of Horifer's quartz while on a trip to California. When V. Wood accidentally dropped a rock and it cracked apart a cut iron nail was found inside. The quartz was about one million years old. Bones found in rock. A man by the name of Ed Conrad, reportedly discovered some impossibly old human bones, trapped in rock in Pennsylvania. The remains had been fossilized and were trapped within solid shale. The bones appear to be human, but the rock in which they were found is between 280 and 300 million years old. Grand Canyon Mummies In 1931, the drive F. Bruce Russell is reported to have found strange underground tunnels in the Death Valley area of the canyon. Russell claimed to have discovered winding tunnels containing artifacts that appeared to be a combination of Egyptian and American Indian cultures. He said that he had found mummified remains that were over eight feet tall at the site. Russell returned with a group of men but was unable to locate the entrance again. No one has ever rediscovered the mysterious tunnels Russell claims to have found. Strange Skeletons In 1888, Seven skeletons were reportedly found in a burial mound just outside Clearwater, Minnesota. All of the skeletons were anatomically correct except for the skulls which had double rows of teeth in both the upper and lower jaws. The foreheads were also unusually low and sloping, with prominent brows. All had been buried in a sitting position, facing the lake. The Salzburg Cube In 1885 a strange steel cube was found embedded inside a block of coal. The edges were sharp and straight and later tests confirmed that the object most definitely to be artificially manufactured. The device showed every sign of being machine made and appeared to even possibly be a small part of a much larger instrument. We have no real idea how many other enigmatic artifacts and items of tremendous significance have simply been labeled error and tucked away in the basement drawer in a museum somewhere, never again to see the light of day and we must then pause to question how such a thing could ever be allowed to happen. Just one of these anomalies should give one reason to pause, but when the sheer volume and unpublicized nature of them becomes apparent it gives cause for alarm. And there are dozens and dozens of such anomalies that can be found all over the world. I could fill an entire volume with such finds and have merely scratched the surface with this list. There are certainly enough of them to challenge the disciplines of traditional science but because they don't fit with the conventional theories and in some instances may even disprove them, these anomalies and exceptions to the academic rule are almost always rejected out of hand. Such an attitude can only be described as a most unscientific mindset. If theories are never to be challenged, if no one in science is ever willing to be proved wrong, if mankind ever becomes egotistical enough to claim that we now already know all there is to know and have discovered all there is to discover, then sadly, we have no science, no future and have lost sight of ourselves. 
but the real point here is that these artifacts cannot simply be dismissed as curios and thrown by the wayside because they don't fit within the academic framework of history. They exist. That is simple fact. So if accepting the fact that these artifacts actually exist is contrary to our current idea of history, then what are we to do? They exist, and when all is said and done it's as simple as that. Our view of history is quite obviously wrong and instead of perpetuating an idea we know to be totally erroneous we should be attempting to discover the real truths. Isn't that what intelligent and rational people are supposed to do? Isn't that how mankind should progress towards the future? It's pretty obvious just by these artifacts alone that there's definitely something going on here that we're not being told about. When one considers the significance of these artifacts, their implications to disprove what we know as history and the unwillingness of academia to present them for scrutiny or in many cases even acknowledge their existence, is conspiracy to strong the word. So not being able to thus rely on our numerous and trusted institutions to keep us informed, we are therefore forced to seek out the truth in these matters for ourselves but hold on folks because when you attempt to investigate the true nature of these artifacts as many others have attempted to do before us, it can seem for a while that the going just gets weirder.